Hello, everyone, and welcome back for another episode of the Outdoor Adventure Series podcast, where we celebrate individuals and families, businesses, and organizations that seek out and promote the exploration, stewardship, conservation, access, and enjoyment of the outdoors. This is Howard Fox. We are in day six of my Alaska adventure uh, with Uncruise Adventures. Uh, I am on the Wilderness Discover. We are in beautiful Alaska, open water. We have blue skies, clouds. Uh, we're, we're looking at whale spouts. We're looking at a lighthouse and just some wonderful weather. And the individual who is charged with keeping us safe and sound is Captain Keith Rach. And I have the pleasure of being up here in the cockpit. We are anchored, and so he's just keeping an eye on the surroundings, but he has graciously agreed to chat with us a little bit. Keith, it's a pleasure to uh, meet you and get to know you over these past couple of days. Well, thank you. I feel the same way. So how did you get this dream job? That's what I want to know. Well, it was one of those situations in life where things happen that you don't expect. I had finished with a job I had been working in Pensacola and was looking for something else. My wife actually found the ad for Uncruise on Indeed, and I uh, I looked at all the pictures from the page, and I said, they're not going to want me because all the pictures are young folks having great times out and, and having adventures, and she said, you yeah, miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So we threw in the application, and the day I was about to say, see, I was... It, they called and said, would you mind interviewing? And it worked out, and I've been here since roughly 2015. So since 2015 now, have you been on a number of ships, or have you been lucky enough to be on the Wilderness Discoverer? I have a tendency to be very loyal to the ship I'm assigned. So my primary has been the Wilderness Discoverer. Company needs, they asked me to sail on the safari quest for a couple of trips over the last couple of years, and I was more than happy to do it. It's another beautiful vessel. But I think my heart and my loyalty belong to the Wilderness Discoverer. Okay. Now, you didn't just apply for a notice on Indeed. Well, yes, you did. Thank you. And we, got to th- we have to thank your wife for that as well. But, I mean, this is not your typical job posting. What is your background that would lead us to believe You are a man that knows exactly what he's doing. Well, essentially, I, figuratively at least, ran away to sea when I was 14. I began working on diving charter boats out of Southern California. From there, I I worked my way up to age 18, at which point I hit a gap in the industry because I was 18. They wanted me to go to 21 so I could be more insurable as an instructor. So I formed a four-year plan that I was going to join the United States Coast Guard. 37 years into that four-year plan, I finally left with 30 years of sea time. I went back into the maritime trades in the civilian sector and ultimately ended up here. And what is it about uh, this boat, this location, and every day is a different day for you, okay? And what is it about this location that is so special? Alaska by itself is magical. The folks that brought me on board and brought me up to speed with the vessel and the program, they told me, Keith, look, it's it's just a matter of get them there. Alaska will do the rest of the heavy lifting and will get people to enjoy themselves. And I think you found that through the week as well as so have I. It's always a fascinating place. You can come to one place on a rainy day, go back the next day on a sunny day, and it's entirely different. One day I'll be in a waterway and I'll see very few whales or orcas or anything else. And the next week I'll come through the area and all of it is there. And it's almost like it's magical and staged. So all of it comes together to keep me coming back to see what happens next. And we appreciate that. And by the way, I don't know who you had to coordinate with this morning, but myself and one of the other passengers on the cruise were just gifted with whale spouts and flukes and the, the the dorsal fin and it was just a wonderful experience so whatever you had to do whoever you had to coordinate this with thank you for that well as i said when you came aboard i i know the company does everything it can with the wildlife union to get them and they promise to show up they just don't tell us where or when and today was the magic day where they decided okay we'll meet them on the way into robert and crow excellent now last night you also took us to a very magical place 
uh, a lot of waterfalls, but one in particular. And uh, there's a lot of comments from the guest about how is this boat going to thread that needle? And so I would imagine being on a, a ship like this, you get to go places some of the big ships, a lot of the big ships don't get to go. It. How did you find and decide we're going to go into this location get us th- and get really get us there in the ship? What does it take? But Red Bluff Bay is where we went, and uh, it's, it's on the chart. Everybody knows it's back there. It shows the waterfall and so forth. Again, my predecessors in the vessel showed me Red Bluff Bay and taught me that I could get through the waterway. Now, occasionally the traffic of the whales makes it a little bit more difficult because there's a whole bunch of rules, but we have gone back and visited exactly. repeatedly. And then the experience you had last night found that most of the guests enjoy that. So we go ahead and try and do that whenever we can. And it was just a wonderful place. And, and I, I almost feel like there may be some, we got so close, there was probably some pebbles on the, on the, on the front uh, bow of the, of, the, of the ship. But uh, it was pretty magical. I'm curious, too, is what is the day in the life of a captain of the Wilderness Discoverer? Well, realistically, I try and keep it boring. If my job remains boring, everything is going perfectly well. My crew, who I am blessed, I've got a great crew. They hit their stride and follow through with all their individual tasks. And it's like the old cliche of a Chinese stagehand. You don't see them, but things are going on all the time in front of you and behind. So my job is more to monitor and make sure that we all stay on track, on cue, and things happen the way they're supposed to. With a crew like this, it stays boring. <laughs> I love that. Now, as you are planning the day's itinerary, or even yesterday's and day before's, tomorrow's, how far in advance are you getting together uh, w- with the the, uh, the events coordinator and other members of the crew to really plan, this is what we think we'd like to do? And how does that type of activity kind of get produced? Well, the company sets the itinerary to begin with, at least the key feature, which is where we begin and where we end. Then we try and hit certain touchstones. There are specific things here in Alaska. For example, ours is considered a glacier cruise. So we're looking to see Glacier Bay and the glaciers in that area and then finish with other glaciers here in Southeast and and give you another good experience with all that. In between, it's a kind of a week to week and day to day. If the weather changes, uh, for example, if I had winds out of the northwest that were pretty heavy today, Robert and Crow would not be my first choice to give you a pleasant experience. So we would move accordingly. And we would have found another more sheltered cove. The expedition leader, the other tour companies that operate here in southeast Alaska, they're all a good bunch of people. And we want you to have a special experience. So we try and avoid each other and give each other some private time, I guess, essentially, and the full Southeast Alaska experience. Okay. And how many of the crew are involved on the bridge activity versus, you know, right now we just got through with breakfast. We have the hotel, Ty, who's the hotel manager. Uh, Megan is our event uh, expedition leader, is going to be sharing, okay, guys, this is what we're going to do. There's a lot, as you say, there's a lot of other things going on behind the scenes. So who else are a part of your supporting uh, team? Well, that's the beauty. I have two mates, a chief mate and a second mate, and they contain or the majority of the day. They operate the watches when the boat is in the middle of the night, moving from location to location. And then they'll help out on the fantail with skiffs and kayaks and so forth through the course of the day. The three of us overlap as far as the bulk of the bridge crew. And then there are a total of four additional deckhands, and they are here, all licensed captains to operate the small boats, do all the tours that we do through it, and the drop-offs along the shoreline. And then two engineers. Those are the heart of the actual vessel. The hotel staff is wonderful, and as you said, they do food service and room service. And again, it's pretty much transparent through the course of the day. 
The guide team is generally about six people, and it's amazing the amount of knowledge they have and the amazing the amount of knowledge they gain just by being here and talking with each other. So in most cases, they're going to be able to give you a good, honest, solid answer on any of the topics you ask about. And if not, I guarantee you, if you, they say, we'll get back to you, they get back to you. And I have been on the receiving end of, we'll get back to you. So I am curious to you, uh, on the sign above where our events are being are presented to us for today, it says the jewel of the fleet, the wilderness discoverer is the jewel of the fleet. I imagine there's a lot of folks who want to come onto the ship and, and be a part of the, this particular boat. As new captains come into on cruise adventures and they need to be trained and acclimated to the system that, that Captain Dan has in place here for all of you, how do you onboard folks like the, the first mate and the other ma other folks that are keeping this boat us safe and keeping it running? It begins with the shoreside support, and they have a marvelous interview process. They It's a diverse. Through the course of my interviews, I spoke with folks on the maritime side, the expedition side, and the hotel side, and they tried to get a feel for how I understand people and how I understand what the program was geared towards. And at that point, I didn't have a wealth of knowledge of the company itself. Once you arrive, um, there's generally one of more senior captains will take you under their wing and kind of let you know what's going on for your side of the house. And each of the individual management staff, the hotel manager, the expedition leader, you work out your compromises, you find your shared interests and my weaknesses to bring me up and places where I can help them to understand the way a boat works as well. And then you just kind of learn it from each other. It is very much a family atmosphere in each and every crew. You'll hear the term shipmate thrown around from time to time, and that's uh, almost the way you discussed our conversation. With a shipmate, when you work with them, you're family. You can part for decades and then meet up again, and it will be like you were just talking yesterday. I love that. So I am curious. You have had a pretty exciting career. I would imagine Coast Guard's very exciting. You never know what you're going to get into. Now you're you're here. You're you're sailing these beautiful waters, uh, powering through. I, I said sail. I don't know if that was a. I said, I guess I could say that. As you look back on your career, what has been your personal aha moment? If today's Keith could look back into that 18-year-old, 16-year-old Keith, what would you say? Well, I would first begin with I made the right choice. Uh, being a baby boomer, I uh, was all about the space program and found I wasn't smart enough on the math to make it that way. And uh, there were folks that were showing programs that showed what a wonderful place the ocean and the sea and the surrounds are. And that got me fascinated and I moved on in that, that direction. Where I am now, I would say my aha moment actually came my first year on board here. I had spent a fair number of years in Alaska, and the majority of that had been in the bearing, and to a given degree, I would tell you that I honestly hated Alaska, because every time I went into the rough weather, I just got beat up and kind of got tired of it. I did get into Southeast before my career ended, and that showed me a whole new world as far as operating in the waterways where we can find all kinds of shelter. I never have to worry about making my passengers seasick or even my crew. And the vistas that you get to see are there. But it really came on an activity day on a rainy, cold Alaskan morning when the liquid sunshine just hung in the air and people were getting soaked. And I was starting to feel actually guilty about saying this is a fun activity till I picked up a pair of binoculars and looked at the faces of a couple of folks in the kayak. And I came to the realization that this was the exact experience they were looking for not a large cruise ship with an endless buffet, but more something that made them feel that they had had a true Alaskan experience. The vistas, the land, the water, the wildlife, all of it. And I saw that on their faces and it was like, oh. And it just made it easy to keep coming back as the guy that provides that. I love that, and, and thank you so much for uh, giving us that that story and that insight. And 
Captain Keith, it's, it's been a pleasure to get to know you, and I appreciate you taking the time for this interview. And really, yourself, your 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 deck crew, and the rest of the crew on the ship, uh, crewmates, and it's been a wonderful experience. It's been a stellar experience, as far as I'm concerned. And I'm just grateful that I get to be here today, and and I'm excited to see what we're gonna see today. We've already been gifted with the with the whales. And I know more is to come and as well as tomorrow. But thank you again for sharing a little bit uh, about your life and your adventures. And we wish you continued success and adventure in your future. Thank you for that. I'm glad it's been a good experience for you. I hope it uh, makes you want to come sail with us again. This is just one of many itineraries we have in Alaska and various other locales. Um, the majority of the place Dan is selected to go ahead and engage with. Uh, there are some fascinating things in the world to see. And he's got you going where it is, and it will be a genuine experience. So I hope we'll see you again. I hope so, too. And if you, if you can, just put in a good word with Dan for me on my behalf. I would appreciate that because I would be all over this. Thank you so much. All right, folks, we've just been chatting with Captain Keith Ray here with us, really guiding us with it, with his team in some beautiful surroundings, experiences, and we're excited to spend another day, day six of our seven-day adventure uh, here in Robert and Crow Islands and just having a wonderful uh, dream experience. So we look forward to sharing more from our guests as well as the members of the crew on here uh, with Uncruise Adventures Wilderness Discoverer. To learn more about Uncruise Adventures, visit their website at uncruise.com. You can also learn more on their social sites, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. If you enjoy podcasts devoted to outdoor adventure, find us online at outdooradventureseries.com. And remember, we welcome likes, comments, and sharing. You can also find us on our Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube pages by searching for Outdoor Adventure Series. And you can also find us on all of the leading podcast platforms. All the links that we mentioned just now can be found in our show notes for this episode. And until next time, we look forward to having you join us for a new episode of the Outdoor Adventure Series podcast. Take care now.